In simple terms, what is the difference between quantum computers and conventional computers and what makes quantum computers so effective for solving very complex problems? Quantum computers encode the information in quantum states. and They make use of the principle of quantum superposition, which means they can explore multiple paths of computation at the same time in a probabilistic fashion. And in the end, they need to be brought into a state that still gives a unique output. Um, this makes them faster in the sense that in problems where exploration of multiple paths gives a speed up, um, they can address problems a lot faster. And faster here means that the growth of time it takes to solve the problem um, as the problem is growing is slower than on a classical computer. Could you give a few examples of problems that can be solved much faster on a quantum computer than on a conventional computer? Um, I can absolutely do that. Um, one problem has initially been phrased as searching an unstructured database. Um, it's now understood that this is a method where you want to test something about which you have no information. And you do it brutally by trial and error. A second problem is the simulation of materials and molecules, which in their most difficult case takes exponential amount of memory on a classical computer, but is very efficient on a quantum computer. A third uh, important example um, that uh, societally we need to think about how to deal with is um, the uh, decryption of certain cryptographic systems um, that um, goes um, qualitatively faster than all the classical computers. And what are some of the biggest challenges we face in quantum computing today and what can be done to make the technology more accessible? I think the biggest challenge is to make really powerful hardware systems. And with powerful the size and the number of quantum bits and qubits is really only one and currently not the most important priority. The um, big priority is much larger. Quantum computers are very prone to operational errors, much more than classical computers. The reason for this is not only that they are a new technology that isn't well developed, but that there's an effect called decoherence that is the mechanism that turns the quantum world, which works at a microscopic level, into the classical world, which works at a macroscopic level, and which human-made physical systems just tend to do over time. We cannot isolate quantum computers from this because otherwise we wouldn't be able to program it. How could quantum computing technology affect cybersecurity and encryption? So there is a quantum algorithm that allows to effectively break RSA cryptography. Um, it is extremely resource demanding, specifically in terms of the error rate for a quantum computer. So there is need for caution, but no need for panic about this topic. If we start doing something about this, um, we, uh, we are well in time. And uh, even, but even if quantum computers take a while, there's a lot of encrypted information which people could simply save. And if quantum computers appear in 10 years, it may be still useful. Um, and this would mean that uh, people who have quantum computers can uh, decipher specifically RSA cryptography, but there are also other crypto systems that are quantum safe that are currently being developed and standardized. And how do you envision the future of quantum computing and which industries do you think will benefit the most from quantum computers? So I am optimistic that we will reach um, quantum advantage in very, very selected problems in about seven years. I am keeping time. Three years ago, I started to say that we'll get it in 10 years. And I think we are roughly on track. 
um, there will be a huge development in designing quantum computers and algorithms together to make a seamless transition and to use quantum computers as effectively. And there may sp still be quite some changes in designs. I would expect that we first see the impact of quantum computers without seeing quantum computers in the sense that they will live in data centers, that they will be used for highly specialized uh, applications. And my big bet is that we will see quantum computers in the seven year period within the development process, specifically of the chemical industry. Um, so we will maybe see products that were developed with quantum computers, but not the quantum computer itself. If we look at the history of classical computing, for example, of Alan Turing, the situation was quite similar. Um, Alan Turing helped deciphering the enigma, but uh, the humble uh, citizen of the United Kingdom did not notice the presence of mechanical computers uh, um, around him. How did quantum computers influence the development of artificial intelligence and what advantages could this bring? Um, this is a very highly speculative question because um, artificial intelligence um, uh, typically works with large amounts of data. And we are currently speaking about powerful but small quantum computers. Um, I think we need to look at this in stages. Um, but uh, one of them is that the training of artificial intelligence could go a lot faster. The other thing is that the evaluation of artificial intelligence would go um, a lot faster. Now we have to see in which situations is this really mission critical. Um, it cannot be done, say, in uh, evaluating a neural network in a self-driving car, because uh, where do you put the quantum computer? Um, one pragmatic first case, you see, I like to talk about pragmatic first cases here, um, is when we are managing factories and controlling quality, because that is something where, for example, we want to every day change how we use machines. Or, and we maybe want to bring this down, uh, time down to every half day or every two hours. Or when we see from our sensor data by um, processing by neural networks that a quality problem is coming our way, then there is a clear benchmark. How long does it take and how many pieces of uh, repair worthy, say, cars have I produced? But it's still quite speculative because um, artificial intelligence itself is extremely hard to benchmark without trying it out. And with the small size of quantum computers we have, trying it out on large data uh, sets is not in the cards yet. And what impact might quantum computing have on the future of computer science education and education in general? I think um, in computer science education, we will take a step back to foundations. Uh, computer science education became a lot more applied, but if we have a novel model of computation that is different from the Turing machine, going back to um, this type of foundation and concept is very important. I think there is a challenge that we, I'm a physicist, so we as physicists, we need to teach uh, quantum to computer science students in a way that makes sense to them, um, which is not rely so much of analogies of other physics classes, focus on operational aspects, um, bring it to the language of discrete mathematics. You know, mathematics is a great common language for us. And in other words, when we, as physics departments, uh, when we teach a quantum course uh, to non-physics majors or teaching candidates, we typically keep the part that for quantum computers is not interesting, and we eliminate the part that's uh, interesting for quantum computers. So I think there is a big curriculum development. I think in education in general, oh, 
the need to for everybody to deal with probability and probability theory in a mature way becomes much more urgent than ever. We have seen it during the pandemic um, when you know measures that were 99% safe were criticized because they're not 100%. But if you think about almost anything in life, nothing has 100% a warranty. In most cases, when people claim this, they are lying. Um, so I think um, in terms of dealing with quantum technologies and quantum computing, this would be on my wish list. Make um, um, probability theory as commonplace as dealing with percentages. Not that everybody is comfortable with percentages, but uh, that should be the direction.